invite our three-time Olympian, Dathan Rittenheim, our number two qualifier. Today, is Dathan here? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and next, our number four men's qualifier, Jeff Eggleston. <laughs> it's going to affect your strategy. You know, I, I've had a lot of experience, both good and bad, so uh, I think I've learned a lot. That's the good thing. And uh, especially Beijing, I learned a lot. I learned, you know, we had some of the Marathon Summit uh, that we did out there. Uh, Randy Wilbur, Chris Austin. Uh, we got a group of a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, you know, experts in the field. And so that was something where I learned a whole lot. And uh, I've done pretty well in the heat since then. I had a little, you know, some, some struggles before that, before I really kind of understood what I needed to do. Um, but I feel like I prepared as well as possible. Uh, I mean, I I was wearing like six or seven pounds of clothes, you know, just to, to get a good sweat, you know, but um, I spent a little bit of time in the sauna with uh, at my dad's house uh, on the days that I trained easy and didn't, didn't sweat that much. And, and then I'd work out in, uh, in the indoor facility at Grand Valley State. Uh, for 70 degrees, so you know I did as much as I could, and uh, I kind of had to weigh the difference between you know being happy uh, at home and training, or you know being you know by myself at some training camp in Florida, you know something I didn't really want to do. So I feel like I trained as good as possible, and I think it's only going to help me. I mean, it's one more factor to shake the race up. Really. Is it going to affect the, uh, the strategy tomorrow? Um, you know, maybe I would be less, uh, a little more hesitant uh, to push it as early, I guess, uh, as maybe I would if it was perfect conditions. Um, you know, in Boston, I remember taking the lead, uh, you know, halfway, and but it was, you know, 40 degrees, and so it's just the more uh, the more factors there are, like uh, weather or things like that, it just means more can go wrong. And so you just, I think I'll just have to think twice before I do anything uh, specific. In a trials race, wouldn't halfway be awfully early to uh, to you know make that kind of an aggressive mood at anyway? Not necessarily. It happened in 08 or 07, I guess, is when the trials were. Uh, we we were 67 oh, yeah. something, and Ryan ran 61 something, and I still came back in 64 flat or something like that. And so um, I think. Uh, <laughs> It, it'll be very interesting to see if someone wants to go earlier than halfway. I just can't see it happening, but I'll be ready if they do because I feel good in my fitness too. And so, uh, we'll just yeah, I don't think I will be pushing the pace too hard before halfway. But uh, if someone else decides to go and the rest and the other good guys go with them, there's, I'm, I'm not hesitating either. So. I think you were really happy with how you ran in Boston. Uh, how did you build off that to get ready for this? I was really happy because uh, Boston was kind of a uh, step back for me uh, because I had it had been a year and a half. I had been beat up. And it was my first uh, first time coaching myself in a major marathon, and so uh, I was pretty cautious. My my volume has been higher now uh, than it was before that, and uh, I've been a little more aggressive uh, in my training just because I hadn't been able to get that one good one in. And so uh, so Boston was pretty important for me, I mean, to be able to come out. and uh, I think I could have ran better, but it was a good step back to kind of where I had been before. Looking for qualifying for your fourth one, what would that mean to you? Well, I just, you know, I got a... Uh, a message just uh, just before I came here, a voicemail from Abdi, you know, and he's, Dayton, I'm gonna, I'm cheering for you, man. I'm gonna, you're gonna make that fourth team, and so he's the, you know, he's the only other guy, you know, that's, uh, I guess, before him, George Young, maybe, you know, but Abdi made that fourth team, and I remember how uh, thrilled he was, and I was devastated at the time, and so um, it means really, that's why, that's all my emotional energy. Everything's been in to make fourth, this fourth team. And so uh, for me, this means everything right now. And so, um, you know, I feel really good. I feel comfortable with what I've, what I've done. And uh, I just, I'm focused on it. And so uh, I haven't even thought past tomorrow, really. So. <laughs> Looking back to your first, first, uh, you know, first Olympics, yeah. what's the biggest thing that's changed for, uh, for you? <laughs> I got all 10 toes working. Um, last time I had broken uh, metatarsal in my foot and I hobbled my way on the team. And I never would have thought that, you know, back then, you know, 12 years ago, uh, I was, you know, one of the only guys with the standard. So I made the team and I, and so 
uh, not displacing anybody else. Uh, I, I had to go even though I knew that it wasn't going to go well because I didn't. I had no idea. You know, there's a lot of people that never. There's great runners who never even make an Olympic team. So I, I guess uh, 12 years later, sitting here thinking that I could uh, hopefully make a fourth team. That's a pretty big blessing. And so um, I feel really good with where I'm at. And looking back to 2004, it seems like so many things have happened since then. Um, but uh, I'm just blessed and happy to still be going strong and feel good and feel like I have as good a shot as anybody to make make that team. And at the time, you ran because with a broken foot because you're thinking, who knows, I may never make another Olympic team. This, yeah. may, this may be the only time. Absolutely. That was my uh, third stress fracture in uh, like a, less than two years, I guess, at that point. And so um, I didn't know if that was kind of the – you know what's what's going on here at that point, and so um, little did I know I come back. You know after I don't know 13 more stress fractures and <laughs> three surgeries and all the, you know, all that stuff. So um, I always I can always bounce back, I guess. You know, and uh, it's not something that I knew at the time. At the time, it just seems like this is going to be the end of the road, um, and I've just been very fortunate to be able to because a lot of it's luck, but a lot of it um, it's just get back on your feet again. Nathan, in the yeah. last couple of last both trials, that Ryan has sort of controlled the races. He sort of yeah. drove it right from the gun in 2012 when the weather was very nice. And you said in 07, couldn't find a leader until he, he actually saw a picture of uh, what's his uh, Kanuchi. Uh, Kanuchi on the Jumbotron. I think they turned those damn things off. Yeah. He saw that, knows how great closer he was, and then he just kicked it into gear and ran at 61.45. So you, the, the trials essentially has lost not just the personality, but they've lost the driver. And you're saying with this weather making everyone even more hesitant, uh, does that does that play to your to your strength, your experience? The fact that if it's a 67 first half, that would that bother you? Would, would, that, would you like that? I mean, fast time means nothing. Well, man, I mean, if they put Ryan in the lead car, maybe he'll still be the driver of the race. I don't know, but um, you know, he 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 did. You know, I remembered vividly both those races. I mean, uh, I, I remember looking at the screen the same time. You know, coming through and seeing Canucci coming up, and Ryan took off, and he was unbeatable that day. But uh, I remember in 2012 too. I mean, right from the start, you knew exactly what was happening. I mean, the first 100 meters, Ryan was in the front, and we were on 206 pace. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I guess every I say of the nine marathons that I've run. Probably six of them, or I've gone out in 62, 50 something to 63, 50 something. I, I don't care if it's fast. I've been there and I've hit the wall before doing it, and I've closed well finishing doing it too. So I'm not afraid of going out hard. Um, and so, if it, even in Beijing, we were out in two crazy fast. I think 63 something through halfway. Exactly. and. And I still, I had a lot of problems in the later half of the race, but I had less problems than some people. So um, that's part of what the marathon is. You don't get everything right, but you minimize. If you're the one that has the, le the least amount of problems, sometimes you're the winner. And so um, I just, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta minimize mistakes. But that's where experience comes into play. Yeah, and I think that that does play a big time. I mean, other than Mab, I mean, a couple other guys ran more, but I've been in the big city marathons, I've been in the Olympic marathons, the trials. And I've, I guess each one of them, you, you learn something and you have to take something from it. And uh, I think if, if it's fast, uh, I have to be able to trust who's pushing the pace and my own fitness and who's going with it, but those are just decisions that you make based on having done it before, and so uh, it gives me a lot more confidence because if you haven't done it before, you don't know what to expect on the other side of 20 miles right. when you've gone out that fast either. As uh, coaching and living over and uh, living over Grand Valley and Grand Rapids, do you think helped your training this year? It's been good for me because uh, lot, some of it's been from just the standpoint of there's a lot more energy younger athletes sometimes you know you're uh sometimes you're you, you get set into your own ways and you kind of forget about everything else and for me um that's been good i've actually taken less time there though uh through this build-up just selfishly focusing on my own training and um i worked out with some of the middle distance guys uh on some of the interval days uh and so just having the facility though it would have been hard in the winter otherwise i mean uh, I was lucky that it's been so good in the Midwest. Uh, every Friday or Saturday, it's basically been 40 to 45 degrees and clear roads. And so it's, I've been able to do all my long tempo runs and long runs in good weather. Um, and then 
done my intervals, you know, on Tuesday or Wednesday on the endo track at, at Grand Valley. Uh, it's 333 meters in lane six, so you know it's three three laps to a K, and um, and so and then the last couple of weeks I've been in there a little bit more just because of the uh, just trying to, in the 70 degrees in there, so it's just one more way to help get ready for the heat. How, how has it uh, been different this time being back in Michigan now training? It's a lot different. <laughs> uh, I train, you know, it's not different for me to train by myself uh, because I've always kind of done that. Um, I was kind of in my own niche uh, wherever I was, and so uh, I don't lack the motivation, you know, for the, the self-motivation to get out there and train. Um, so that was never difficult. Uh, the biggest difference, you know, the biggest training difference is um, just for me to be able to be confident in what I'm doing, I had to run that training through... Um, you know some people that I really trust, and so it worked good for me for Boston. I ran it through Jason Hartman. You know, was very successful. Um, so as someone I trust a lot to look at my training, I send him my training and what I'd done a couple months beforehand, and then what I had planned for the last couple months, and he would tell me his ideas. Same thing with Greg Meyer and uh, Krista Austin. Um, this is the other person I, I use for that, and so, um, and then my agent Dan, just because he's a good sounding board, he doesn't maybe necessarily know everything, but he knows me as a person, and you know sometimes that's the biggest struggle when you're self coaching yourself is to not think of things emotionally, because you let you wrap everything into your training, and so you just want to, you think you can do more, I think you should do more, and so. I've been able to realize that I need to do a little less and be healthy, um, but my intensity is still really good. And so I just, like Dan, for example, would tell me, do it at 80% of what you were going to do. And so if I was going to do 10K of intervals, it was going to be 8K of intervals. And so if it was going to be a 26-mile run, just back it down to 23. And that's the kind of stuff that intuitively I, I probably know and if you're a coach looking at someone's training you know but as an athlete doing it yourself you always think you can do more and you have to have that though you always if you don't have that you're not going to be successful when it comes to racing either. how many miles did you get up to what would, would you carry as an average i averaged um for 10 weeks um i think 100 in three miles a week in six days. I, I took a day off every week. Six weeks, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and that includes the, the last couple of weeks. I, I had about one, I had 110 a week for about four or five weeks um, in six days, mm -hmm. but pretty much took a day off every week. And something it's helped me stay healthier. Um, I think I haven't had all the little things that, that crop up. Uh, no I was always nursing injuries before. And no nickels, right? Nothing really. I mean, I never had to change. I had one day where I kind of had a cramp in my quad, you know, but I basically just pushed the workout back a day, and that was it. Uh, I still ran that day, um, which is, this. that's been good for me. Even before I ran 2000, uh, 207, I, I had a, my foot started bothering me 10 days out, and I had to cut a hole out of my shoe, and you know I ran the whole race with a big hole cut out wow. of the shoe, and you know so even in going in Boston, I had a shin problem and a foot problem right after the New York City half, and I mean other than I, I got this crank in my neck yesterday morning <laughs> right before I came, and I couldn't turn left yesterday. That's when you're real bad. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I've had a lot. Of, I've had a lot of work done on it in the last two days. It's a lot better. It was really painful running the last two days, but that's been the worst of. Uh, of uh, everything going into this, so um, so I feel good about that. But I might have given it away. That if they want to pass me on the left, they might have. To, they might, I still can't quite turn all the way that way. How long have you been working on this self-coaching approach? It's been almost two years now. Um, I kind of started, and I mean, I really wasn't healthy enough to. I mean, I whenever I was injured, I I, I know more about cross training than any person alive, <laughs> um, and ultra G running and stuff. I just like even when I when I was with Brad or Alberto, whoever it was, I just went off on my own and did my thing because I knew how to stay fit. Um, but it's really been I've been healthy enough to do to really. It's been about two years. Jason, what are your impressions of the course? What's that? Your impressions of the course. The course. Um, so I ran up and down Figaro yesterday. I I didn't do one of the course tours beforehand, uh, but I ran up and down it. It's pretty. You know what? I think people. It's, it's a little more uphill and downhill than you think because um, I trained on a very similar rail trail that changes that same elevation. It's still significant enough that I'm not even going to probably use a watch, but if you were going up to the splits, you might just be discouraged coming back up. Um, 
but really that sun is going to be intense there. But the turns, um, I ran those this morning when I did my shakeout, and uh, they're significant, but that I think really helps me. I mean, it's going to be like a cross-country race through that part, you know, and that's something I've excelled at and was telling Dan that, like, remind me of the Capacho cross-country race I ran last year. It's like the tor- twisty, turny, Spell like, that. What is it? Capacho, uh, C-A-M-P-A-C-C-I-O. Where's that cross country? It's in, in, Italy. in Italy. And I ran this this race, and it was just the whole time you just zigzag back and forth. It feels like you're doing an S, and that's what it feels like for that that section there. And so I think that's only a good thing for me. 